take a look at adding, subtracting these rational expressions. So what we've discussed so far is simplifying a given rational expression. We talked about multiplying and dividing rational expressions, and now saying the best for last, adding, subtracting, which unfortunately is a little bit tougher than what we've already talked about. But we have to know it nonetheless. When we add or subtract rational expressions, again, we're going to appeal back to grade school because fractions are rational expressions. So how we treated our fractions back in the day is how we're going to treat our rational expressions today with a couple little tweaks because of the fact that, you know, you got to do factoring and other things that are involved that get a little messy with algebra that we didn't have to worry about back in grade school. So the first type of problem you were faced with, I'm sure, was where the denominators were the same. So the first type of adding and subtracting of fractions were common denominators, as it were. So in this case, both denominators are 8. So your teacher said, well, if the denominators are the same, if you already have common denominators, all you have to do is simply add, or if this is subtract, subtract, add or subtract the numerators accordingly. You don't add or subtract the denominators, you keep that common denominator. So final answer on the surface, we'll have to have that common denominator of 8. So we're not adding 8 and 8. Right? We don't do that. We have to have a common denominator, and once it's common, we write it down. What we add or subtract is the numerator, in fact. So 27 plus 3, which is 30. And then there's one last thing to do is look at your final answer. Is that a completely simplified fraction? Is that in lowest terms? And the answer is no. Uh, 2 divides into both of those, so... 2 divides into 30 15 times, 2 divides into 8 4 times, so we would say 15 fourths would be our final answer to this addition problem. So adding, subtracting when the denominators are the same, not very difficult at all. Becomes difficult when the denominators are not the same. So we have an example of 7 eighths minus 5 twelfths, so you ran into problems like this after you practiced these common denominators for many, many days. You say The teacher would say, okay. What happens now when they're different? Well, your first thought is, well, subtract the numerator, subtract the denominators. I wish it were that simple, but unfortunately it is not. The rule is, if you do not have common denominators, you do not add or subtract. So you basically have to get a common denominator. You say, well, how do you get a common denominator? In grade school, you'd say that. But what we're really looking for is not just a common denominator. I could multiply 8 times 12 and get 96. 8 times 12 is 96. That would be considered a common denominator because we're looking for a number that 8 and 12 will both divide into. In other words, 8 will divide into 96 with no remainder. 12 will divide into 96 with no remainder. All right. So 96 is a common factor or a common denominator. Well, I'm not just looking for a common denominator. I'm going to be wanting to look for the least common denominator because this, just multiplying to get that common denominator, it's not a wise way to handle these rational expressions when we start having variables. It'll be a very complicated situation. So we're not just looking to multiply those. We're looking for the least common denominator. So maybe 96 is the smallest denominator, smallest common denominator, but I don't think it is. Right? If you just think a little bit, 8 and 12, the smallest number that 8 and 12 will both divide into. Again, I'm saying 8 and 12 divide into. A lot of people get this confused with GCF. I'm not looking for the greatest common factor being 4. That's not the idea. I'm looking for the least common multiple. It's just you hear the word least and you're thinking, well, it's less, smaller. No, it's just the opposite. We're looking for the smallest common denominator. What is the smallest number 8 and 12 divide into? And the answer turns out to be, well, it's 24. 8 divides into 24 three times with no remainder. 12 divides into 24 twice with no remainder. And 24 represents the smallest, the least of all common denominators. So least of all common denominators, we just call this the LCD. Least 
common denominator. What would 96 be called? That would just be called a common denominator. As would, you know, we could multiply 96 times 10. 960. I promise you. 8 goes into 960. 12 goes into 960. We could use 960 if we wanted to for a common denominator. But we're not looking for a common denominator per se. We're looking for the least of all the common denominators. So in this case, the least of all the common denominators would be 24. So we'll go with that. Now, that's just part of the game. Let's kind of write this how we're going to do these problems when we start getting a little bit more complicated. I'll say LCD is 24. Least common denominator is 24. So we're going to write now what are called equivalent or equal fractions. In other words, we're going to rewrite 7 eighths, not changing its value, but changing its denominator to a 24. Well, obviously that's going to have to change its numerator so it, so it stays 7 eighths, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the same thing with 5 twelfths. So how I was taught to do this is I would write 7 eighths and then underneath it 5 twelfths. Now back in grade school, we didn't really talk too much about negatives back in the day, so we would say, okay, we just got to remember to subtract these at the end. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to turn all subtraction problems into addition and take the negative through. That way, when we get done with this, writing equal fractions or equivalent fractions, we'll always just know we're adding these. Now, what you have to do, though, is drag that negative along with this. All right, so not exactly like I did in grade school, but it, it, this will be easier in the long run. So I write them one underneath the other because next to each, we're going to write their equivalent fraction, their equal fraction, with the least common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite 7 eighths with the denominator 24. I'm going to write negative 5 twelfths with the denominator 24. Now, how this works, you know, you would ask yourself, 8 times what will give me the LCD? You would say, well, you've got to multiply 8 times 3 to get your least common denominator, so you have to multiply your numerator by the same amount. So whatever you do to the denominator, you must do the, to the numerator. So I have to multiply 8 times 3 to get 24. Got to multiply 7 times 3 to get 21. 21 24 is 7 eighths. They're equal or equivalent fractions. Same thing here. 12 multiplied by 2 gives me 24, so negative 5 multiplied by 2 gives me negative. 10. Negative 10 over 24 is the same thing as negative 5 twelfths. They're equivalent fractions. Now, what's so great about these two fractions over here? Well, they now have common denominators. And it's back to a situation like this. You just simply add or subtract their numerators. Well, since we already turned the subtraction into addition and took the negative through, we're just going to simply add the numerators. So 21 24 plus negative 10 24 gives me what? 11. 24, I think. So 21 plus negative 10 or 21 minus 10 is 11 24. And that's my simplified answer. That one doesn't go any lower in, into any lower terms. All right. Now, you might understand this process. I hope you do, actually, for adding, subtracting with fractions. When we go to rational expressions, it's pretty much the same idea. It's just we have to employ some of our algebra. And we got to think a little bit harder about the least common denominator. That's usually the sticking point. So we try one. It's quite a process to this adding, subtracting. In fact, uh, some people say it's the toughest thing you'll do in algebra is adding, subtracting rational expressions that don't have a common denominator. But it's just there's a lot of steps to the process, and there's a lot of background information you do need to know. You have to be able to factor. You have to be able to simplify you know, find least common denominator, that sort of thing. There's a lot of stuff involved in each and every problem. So let me take an example. Say we had um, 5 over 8x. And I want to subtract, uh, let's go 11 over, say, 6x squared plus, say, 1. Say we have a problem like this, a little bit more advanced, but same concept. 
We're adding, subtracting three fractions here. Well, first things first, notice your denominators are all different, so we're going to need a common denominator, not just any common denominator, but a least common denominator. So when we look at these, these are all monomials. That's very important. So with monomials, you compare the coefficients first. So 8, 6, and 12. The least common denominator of 8, 6, and 12 is actually 24. We select that number, apparently. Okay. Then you go to your variables. This has one factor of x. This has two factors of x. This has no factors of x. Right. So in order for all of these, these three things, to divide into this least common denominator, it has to accommodate the greatest amount of factors, whether it's in common or not. So one factor of x, two factors of x, no factors of x. You need two factors of x. It's kind of like the exact opposite of your greatest common factor. In essence, it really is. It's your least common denominator. So my next move, I'm going to turn that into plus. Take the negative through, so now it's a giant addition problem. All right, 5 over 8x. Underneath that, negative 11 over 6x squared. And underneath that, 1 12th. Because next to these, I'm going to be writing their equivalent or equal fractions with the LCD in tow. So 24x squared, 24x squared, and 24x squared. You're rewriting each and every one of these fractions with that denominator of 24x squared. Okay, so we just asked 8x times what is 24x squared? Well, that would be times 3x. So you multiply the numerator by the same. That gives us 15x. 6x squared times 4. So times 4 to the numerator gives me negative 44. And 12 times x squared. Sorry. 12 times x squared will give us, oh, sorry, 2x squared. Be careful there. Give us 24x squared, so multiply 2x squared to the numerator. And it's a simple matter of now that we have the common denominator, least common denominator, just add your numerators. Uh, let's go highest power to lowest power. So 2x squared, these are none of these are like terms. I'll add the 15x next and then subtract the 44 over 24x to the second. Now, I would check that to see if it simplifies, but the only thing that's going to cancel with 24x squared is another monomial, which would be a greatest common factor in the numerator, and I'm seeing a greatest common factor over there. All right, we'll see more problems in the next video.